This is my late 2012 iMac 21.5 inch. As far as Apple is concerned, this is e-waste. And that's what they want you to think too. But is there a way to keep this machine usable in 2024? Join me as I answer that question and hopefully save you guys a little bit of money. Returning viewers will recall this video I did on the 2012 MacBook Air, where I tried to figure out the best way to keep it running. I noted that macOS 10.13 High Sierra ran really well on the machine, but it was outdated and I considered it to be unsuitable. I also said that macOS 10.15 Catalina ran quite poorly on this machine for not much of an improvement compatibility and security wise. I then tried OpenCore Legacy Patcher for the first time and installed macOS 13 Ventura. And the results were awful. I know we've not gotten to the iMac yet, but bear with me as this is good context. After getting rid of Ventura on the MacBook Air, I installed Linux Mint and I used it happily for a few months, but I just could not bear the poor battery life. I was getting about 3 hours of battery compared to 7 on macOS. So I ultimately downgraded back to 10.13 High Sierra, because the experience using the machine was so much better. I just make sure to stay mindful that it's an old operating system and to not do anything too sensitive on there. So what about the iMac then? The first thing that we absolutely have to do is replace the internal 5400 RPM spinning disk with an SSD. The fact that Apple shipped 5400 RPM drives as your main boot drive, even in 2012, is ludicrous. These read and write speeds on the Blackmagic disk speed test show just how awful the disk is. This is something I've not done before, opening an iMac with a glass display panel. <laughs> but I have my little pizza cutter tool here and the adhesive strips that are needed to put the display back on after you've taken it off. We start by carefully inserting the cutter tool in the gap between the display glass and the iMac body. What we're doing here is trying to sever the adhesive that keeps the display attached to the case. There's a couple of ribbon cables that you need to disconnect before you fully lift it off, but when you do, it'll look something like this. We can see the 5400 RPM drive there, and it's held in place by four T8 screws. This is definitely the easiest part of the process, we'll just replace the drive with an SSD here. And now it's time to scrape off the adhesive from around the edges. You definitely have to do it, otherwise your display won't sit flush and it might even fall off. And then we reapply the new adhesive strips. As you can see here, I chose to put in a different SSD compared to the one that you just saw me put in. And that's because this process is taking such a long time, I don't want to do it again. And so I've put a better SSD in there, double the size of the one I installed first. Before I reattach the display using the new adhesive strips, we'll just test the machine and make sure it boots. And thankfully it does. This drives out of my 2010 MacBook. Something you'll see me doing a lot on this channel is stealing parts from my other machines. Now that we've verified that everything's working, it's time to peel off the other side of these strips and reattach the display. A pretty simple process. Okay, the SSD is in, it's working. The second step to keep this machine usable in 2024 will be installing a newer version of macOS via OpenCore Legacy Patcher. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to erase the macOS 10.8 partition and this is going to be what we attempt to install OpenCore onto. So we're currently here, macOS 10.13 High Sierra. As you may have seen in one of my previous videos, I spoke about 10.13 on my 2012 MacBook Air. I attempted to update it to Ventura via OpenCore Legacy Patcher and it ran awfully. I also noted that Catalina on that machine, while being the latest supported version, ran quite poorly. So what do we do with this iMac then? Both the machines in question here are from the same year, but this one, if we go to about this Mac, has double the RAM that the MacBook Air did. We have a GPU, which is more powerful than the integrated HD 4000, and a faster processor. It's faster, but not by heaps. So I think I'm gonna veto Ventura. I just think installing that would be a repeat of what we experienced on the 2012 MacBook Air. My gut is telling me we should try Big Sur, 
but this chart here is telling me to install Monterey because the version is still maintained. So let's open the patcher, download macOS installer, and we'll choose Monterey. That is going to take a long time for me. Now that the installer's finished copying over to the USB stick, we can install OpenCore to the internal drive. So I'll select yes, and install to disk, and I'll choose the internal SSD that we've just installed. And there we go, we can now reboot and attempt to install macOS Monterey. So let's do that. Holding Alt after the Apple Chime brings us to the boot menu, and we'll select EFI boot. This lets us get to the Monterey installer USB we've just created, and then it proceeds exactly like a normal macOS install. And happily, it goes ahead without a hitch. Let's go to Apple, about this Mac, and there we are. macOS Monterey version 12.7.4 running on the late 2012 iMac. So far, it's very snappy. I'm pretty surprised with that because Ventura on the 2012 MacBook Air crawled. Sometimes with these things there are post-install patches that you need to apply. So I'm going to run the open core patcher again and see if we need to do those. And it looks like all the applicable patches are already installed. What we're going to do next is download the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test and see what difference the SSD has made. So as we can see here, the results are significantly better with that SSD, especially with the read speeds being at about 500 megabytes per second. It's not like what you'd see off an M.2 drive or the more modern Apple Silicon drives, but it is so much better than that 5400 RPM spinning disk. So what can we do with this machine? Well, being that this release of macOS is currently supported, we can install Premiere Pro and edit this entire video on this machine. I wouldn't go as far as describing it as a hellish experience, it's slower than the performance I'm used to on my Hackintosh, but this really surprised me. It will definitely help that all of my stuff is 1080p. I did experience a few freezes, especially when I started to stack up things like keyframes, so it's definitely not suitable for anything other than extremely basic videos. I was also able to install the latest version of Pixelmator straight from the App Store and create the thumbnail for this video with ease. I'm very surprised with the amount of use I'm getting from this machine now. So that's the video, hope you enjoyed it. I think we've shown that this machine is not e-waste. I'm really tempted to try and install macOS Ventura on here now, but I'm worried that it's just gonna slow the thing down. I've been using this for a couple of days now and it's perfectly stable and surprisingly indistinguishable in performance compared to High Sierra. But that might just be because I was running High Sierra on the 5400 RPM disc. In any case, thank you very much for watching. I hope this was useful for you. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you have a Mac of this age? Do you plan to do something like this or are you just gonna upgrade? Catch you in the next one. Bye bye.